Here's an example that involves the bivariate normal distribution. Carl Pearson was one of the early pioneers in statistics and he analyzed 1078 pairs of heights of fathers and that's the random variable x and the adult heights of their sons which is y measured in inches. And assuming that the parameters in the bivariate normal are, and what I've put in here is I have put in his sample values. For example, the average heights of those 1,078 fathers was 67.7 inches. The average heights of the 1,078 sons was 68.7 inches. Here are the standard deviations of the heights of the fathers, standard deviation of the heights of the sons, and the positive correlation here is 0.501, and that is positive because height tends to run in the family. If you have taller fathers, you tend on average to have taller sons and vice versa. So even though it's cheating a little bit to use his sample values as population parameters, the sample size is pretty large so maybe we can get away with that. Furthermore, we would want to do some analysis to see if the bivariate normal model is appropriate here, but with heights you kind of suspect that it is. So here are the questions, assuming that these are the appropriate parameters, even though they were taken from data. And that is, for a father who is six feet tall, that is, let's say we have x equals 72, find the expected height of the sun, find the standard deviation of the height of the sun, and the probability that the sun is over six feet tall. Now you'll notice that a six foot tall father at 72 inches is over a standard deviation above the average height of fathers, well over a standard deviation. So that's a very, very tall father back then. You'll also notice that the sons tend to be on average an inch taller than the fathers. I don't know why that is. Maybe there was better diet or maybe these particular men tend to marry um, taller women. And um, in this particular analysis, the, um, the height of the mother is left out. And what that does is that means your predictions are not going to be as accurate. There are other examples to where the adult height of the father and the mother are considered with the adult height of the son or daughter. But this one only considers fathers and sons. Okay, so let's begin with the conditional distribution. The conditional distribution of y given x equals x is normally distributed, this is from two pages ago, with a uh, mean of this and a variance of that. So if we plug in our specific values, mu sub y is 68.7 inches, rho sigma y is put in, x here is assumed to be 72, so the 72 shows up right here divided by sigma x and here is 1 minus rho squared multiplied by sigma y squared. When you compute those two quantities it turns out the the height of the sun given that the father is six feet tall is normally distributed with a mean of 70.91 inches and a variance of 5.91 inches squared. Keep in mind that this second parameter here is a variance. Now on the next page we're going to answer the questions A, B, and C. So let's start with A. And A asks for the expected value of the height of the sun given that the father is 72 inches tall. And that turns to, out to be 70.91. All you have to do is go right to here and you will get your 70.91. The standard deviation of the height of the sun is the same as saying we want for part B the square root of the variance of y given x equals 72 and you know that that will be nothing more than the square root of 5.91 and that 5.91 came from right here. Square root of the variance is the standard deviation. When you calculate the square root of 5.91, at least to three decimals, you get 2.43.
Now part C is asking for the probability that the sun is over six feet tall. And so that will be the probability that the sun is over six feet tall given that the father is six feet tall. Now again at this point you have to lean on the the conditional distribution here and what you do is you take those and subtract off their means and divide by their standard deviations. So this is the probability that y minus 70.91 that's the conditional mean height of the sun divided by the standard deviation which is 2.43 of the height of the sun is greater than 72 minus 70.91 divided by 2.43. Now what has been done is this inequality right here has had its conditional mean and its conditional standard deviation brought into the mix so we have already used this given x equals 72 portion so all we have to do is calculate that probability. Now this will be equal to the probability this random variable right here is a normal minus its mean divided by its standard deviation so that is going to be capital Z that will be standard normal and when you work out this expression right here you get 0.449 that probability turns out to be 0 0.327 and so at this point I'm going to go to R and calculate these. So at this point I'll go into the R program and one way to calculate the probability Z is greater than 0.449 is to say 1 minus P norm of 0.449 and that will give you the 0.327. Now there is a second way and that is instead of doing all that normalizing you can leave it to R to do the normalizing. You can put in the 72 here and then put in 70.91 and 2.43 as your other parameters and you will again get 0.327. So either way is fine. One final question here is what would change if Galton's data set instead uses X as the average of the father's height and 1.08 times the mother's height. And that 8% is just to account for the height differences between men and women on average. Well what this will do is it will take into account not just the father but the father and the mother and the effect on the, uh, the child's um, adult height. And here what we're going to do is not just look at sons but look at both sons and daughters and if you have a daughter you take her adult height and multiply it by 1.08. The effect of all of this is by including mom in the picture now what you've done is you have decreased the variability on your conditional distribution and you would get a tighter variance in this particular case.